in three, two, one. Now I'm just screwing with you. In three, <laughs> one. Welcome to Off the Cut, a podcast where we talk about building, making, and answering all of your questions. I'm Eric from Spensley Design Co. And I'm Zach from Zach Builds. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on air, you can send it to offthecutpodcast at gmail.com. You can find both of us on YouTube, Instagram, and unfortunately, because we have to keep up with kids, you can find us on TikTok too. All right, now let's get into the show. That's the sound that you've just arrived at Off the Cut episode 86. We're up in Toronto and here in Ohio. Today is known as Wednesday, October 18th, 2023. And on this day in history, the Green Suitors podcast, the worst woodworking podcast in our space, available on Apple and Spotify, all converted to using Odie's oil exclusively. In an wow. attempt to actually have something interesting to talk about. Jeez, how much do you think Odie's Oil had to pay them in order to do that? Oh, it, it had to have been a hefty check. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know, the three of them have pretty low levels of integrity. They would probably use that product. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh. look, if the Odie's Oil guy was willing to personally drive a dump truck full of money to my front door and apologize to me, then I would take his money. <laughs> Here, here's a real question. And this isn't just bash Odie's oil, although it is a common occurrence on this podcast. Sure is. Let's say that, that the guy who owns Odie's oil calls you and is like, Zach, I want to set up some sort of sponsorship. Mm -hmm. What would it have to look like for you to take it on? Oh boy! <laughs> especially, especially knowing all just the overall hatred and the woodworking space for what that guy <laughs> said, like like a year and a half ago or whatever to to Dan from uh, Daniel Dunlap Woodworks. Yeah, I mean, he said it to multiple creators, right? To be fair. right but yeah, right. To, yeah. I uh, I think that there would have to be some sort of acknowledgement of the fiasco in the integration. Be like, yes. look, Odie's Oil does not have the best reputation with content creators. And they're really sorry about that. And they're trying to do better. Right. And also they've reformulated the product so that it doesn't suck. <laughs> that, that's critical too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I don't, Derek, I want to ask you this from someone, you, you know, you, you engage with a lot of different creators and stuff like that. Yeah. How would you feel if you logged in to YouTube, watched a video and you're like, Zach, Eric, you know, whoever is like, they're they took on an Odie's oil, Odie's oil sponsorship. What would you have to see for you to be like, okay, yeah, I get it. I mean, I don't, I don't have any skin in the game for the whole Odie's oil thing, but I feel, um, I understand the the situation at hand, but um, I don't, I don't think I, I do see it get used, and I think I wonder what other people think, but yeah. I don't personally have any skin in the game, so I don't have a an opinion. So you wouldn't one way care or the much. other. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. bother me. Okay. okay. I but I know it, it, uh, Lincoln Street was using it in his recent comparisons yeah. uh, of finishes, and he was actually talking about how it was doing well in some of these in some of these areas. And I thought that was just kind of yeah funny that you know he he didn't shy away from it. Yeah, I think in his original finish shootout video, John said that it actually scored quite well, and he was kind of pissed off about that because the owner yeah. was such a douche. Yeah. Um. My issue with the product has always been that it doesn't maintain the shine that it has when you first apply it. I, oh, I did a table with it and then I came back, you know, three, four months later and it had gone from kind of a satin finish to more of a matte finish. Yeah. Which bugged me. It didn't really maintain that same level of shine. It looked really good when it was first applied, 
Um, and a lot of people, I think on Instagram, told me that you have to then apply, they've got like a wood butter or something like that. There's another top coat that you can apply on it to okay. make it look a little bit better. But I don't know. I'm kind of, call me crazy, but I think if you're going to have a product that's advertised as a wood finish, it should not need another layer on top of it in order to work. I think that might be part of my just uh, uh, difficulty in... in in this is that I've never actually used the product. So I don't know personally if it's good or bad, but there's plenty yeah. of other products out there that don't have the same negative reputation or yeah. issues and baggage that come with it that I'll just go there. Like I just picked up some walrus oil the other day that I plan to try out and use. Yeah, that's right. Does walrus oil have like a, a hard wax? Oh, I've only do. ever seen it as a literal oil that you can kind of soak boards in and stuff. I got both. I got a little tub or a little uh, squeezy thing of like yeah. a liquid, and then I got okay. like a little like canister of like a hard wax. Is that okay. their okay. butter thing? I don't remember. I think they were just both both called um, finish wax. I think one of them may have been finish paste. Okay. okay, so there's a furniture finish which is in like a squeeze bottle. And then there's like a little t like a little tub of wax that looks like uh, it's called like furniture wax. It's just kind of like it's like a hard brick, almost like a candle. Sure. Yeah. And then That's they also the have. Way. Okay, you got that one. And oh, they I also got the wood have wax. Sorry. Okay. Okay. And they also have furniture butter, which is kind of like a uh, literally like products. a butter consistency, which is like a oil and wax wood finish. I've used all of them. To be honest with you, the reason I used them is because I was just making stuff that was like pretty much only for YouTube. And I was like, I just yeah. need to slap some stuff on it to have it be done. That furniture butter, I had it on a coffee table for a while. And it did require like reapplication. Like it got got dull, you know, every yeah. like six mm -hmm. to 12 months. But honestly, it worked pretty well. All right. So school me on the butter. How does it work? You do wax first, then butter? So the furniture butter is an oil wax combo. It's literally like okay. think of like a can of margarine. Okay. You know? So it is it is is a one stop shop. It's not yes. a multi product thing. Okay. Correct. It's a one stop shop, and you basically just slap it on the table, take a Scotch Brite pad, just rub it in. You let it sit like overnight, and then you rub off the excess, yeah. and it cures in like a month. Okay. And then the Month wax is, is you rub it on for about long, an hour but... and then you rub it off whatever's yeah. left. And that, yeah, the only one I've ever used is the what is it, the the beeswax one with the little boy in the chair on the front of it. I can't I get it at home. Oh, oh the is that... Oh, I have a can of that stuff, but I can't remember yeah. the or a tin of it, I should say, but I can't remember what the name yeah. of it is. But it yeah, it it has the same thing where I, I used it on a couple things and over time they fade. And you yeah, have to yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like that's probably the case with most of these waxes and oils. Yeah, like even I think your natural finish. Like Rubio, like, you know, after a year or so, just slap another coat on there, like freshen it up. That's a big yeah. ask for me. I don't like refreshing stuff. One and done. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm the I'm same lazy. way. Yeah. <laughs> I've been looking at my dining room table for what, like a year, year and a half now. And I'm always <laughs> like... <laughs> The one, the one that only came out three months ago. <laughs> the one that just put out the video like a couple months ago. And um, I keep looking and like the day one when I bought it, in, brought it in there, I dropped a screwdriver because I was like changing a light bulb above it. And I dropped oh. a screwdriver and just dented the shit out. Oh, there we go. Explicit. Um, <laughs> dented the table like crazy. And I was like, eh, I got to like steam that and like, you know, puff that little little piece of wood out. Yeah, I'm never gonna get to that. <laughs> like, like you know what? Honest. Though, I'm kind of of the mind that I like when stuff gets a little beat up and used. I was thinking about it the other day. I was looking at my desk and I was like, my desk's a little beat up now because I've been using it like a workbench for the past I've right. gone three years or something like that. <laughs> right. And then I was like, but each one of these little marks in there—that's a little story from my life from some, from some project I was working on some screwdriver that I dropped while changing a light bulb. I like right. those marks and stuff like that. Uh, I agree. And it makes you not like 
baby the furniture anymore. He's like, oh, whoa, 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 exactly. whoa, whoa, use a coaster, use a coaster. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's super freeing to just be like, yeah, whatever, throw your hot mug on there, throw your cool drink on there. I don't care. Like, same when, really like, you to... get, like, a little ding or a scratch on your car. And now you're just like, yeah, whatever. Well, the car thing, the car is a different story. Don't even, don't even, <laughs> <laughs> don't even talk. All my cars oh. are spotless. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, no, I do often see these guys driving around in beater trucks where they'll just throw tools in the back. They'll, you know, they'll whack yeah. a two by four on the side of their truck and not even care at all. And I am pretty jealous of those guys. <laughs> you got paint but, down the side of it. Exactly. Oh, I've seen that so many times. It's Yeah, yeah. Especially stucco guys, like a oh, uh, yeah. stucco will spill in the back of their truck and then like run out over the bumper and stuff. Oh, oh. just have <laughs> paint spill all over the place. But nobody likes that person who follows you around their house and puts coasters under all your drinks and stuff. No, no. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm I'm of the mindset now where just like coasters are a waste. Just get rid of them. Unless they're made out of concrete, in which case they're super sick. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to look. I'm always curious every once in a while. For everybody who doesn't know that jab, um, the first YouTube video that I ever did, you can go back and look at it. Was I it should go back and make... watch that. I don't think I've seen it. Oh, dude, it's so bad. Yeah. I, I want to go back and look at your first YouTube video, too. What yeah, it's it? pretty rough. It's pretty rough. Uh, what is it? Uh, it's me making a cutting board. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to. Cool. I wanted to start. I was like, dude, I know that because when you first make a YouTube video, it is a bit of a, a mountain that you have to climb, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I was thinking, I was like, should I make a desk? Should I make a table? I was like, I'm already so worried about just being able to capture all the various elements of this project. I was like, I'm going to do the right. simplest project. So that I can actually just focus on making video. Right. Yeah. Right. So thus cutting board. That was actually... kind of what I was going for. But I also thought I was going to be selling a bunch in bulk, a bunch of small products. I was like, this would be great. I can show people these sick concrete sure. coasters. Everybody's going to buy them. Nobody bought any of them. <laughs> when um, you first put out that video, do you remember like ballpark how many views you got on it? Oh, dude. Oh, I just had it up. I have, I just looked it up. I have 8,500 views in since. Four years. In four years. So since August 16th of 2019. That's only okay. a two minute video, though. Yeah. I know, well, I cut off a lot of like bullshit at the beginning and end of it. Um, oh, so you actually went back and edited this video? Yeah. So now it, it just starts. Yeah, it just gets yeah. into it right away. Just goes right into Have you had any luck doing that? You you had mentioned in a few places you wanted to cut the intros out of videos and yes. just get right. And have you had any success doing that on old videos? Oh, yeah. But I, yeah. But I also had changed titles and thumbnails, so I can't necessarily correlate the success of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I was well. looking through um, TubeBuddy recently. And they have a tool that's maybe a little bit underrated that I think maybe some people are sleeping on. It will go through your videos and it will find the best performing videos that have the lowest click-through rates. And it'll, it'll basically tell you like, hey, redo the thumbnails for these videos because they have the biggest potential to see because that you already really? know it's a great video if it's performing well even though it has a shit thumbnail um what's the feature so, called uh, okay give me talk about something and give me a second to click away at my computer here and i'll try okay. and pull it up okay derek we rudely interrupted you when we were talking about uh, like the first video that we put out and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I was just going to say, to, it was funny, because today I was making a cutting board. Um, not for a video or anything like that. The project I'm working on, uh, the island, I'm almost done with, and I just started painting it today, and I had a bunch of scraps. And so I took the, because it's got multiple woods in it, it's got a uh, walnut and maple throughout. So yeah. I took some of the scraps of the walnut and maple, and I just made a cutting board for the the people i'm making it for so it's just Ooh. kind of a thank you oh yeah that's a classic move 
or people who like where they commission stuff if you have some leftovers and it's a moderately yeah. higher price project like you can it doesn't have to be some crazy end grain pattern cutting board no, just like a just quick straight. like yeah straight grain zoop glue it up sand it down throw some feet on it if you get crazy they're gonna yeah. be appreciated appreciative as hell for that yeah i was originally thinking about making a jenga set because they're a family but then I was like, the strips are long enough. I could do a cutting board, and that'd probably be a little more useful. Yeah. What? Um, oh my god! I was on TubeBuddy, and it said sign up for the new TubeBuddy beta. Oh. I don't even know if I want to do that. Um. So it's in the click magnet tool. There's a subsection of that tool. I'm just waiting for it to load. It has to compile a bunch of stats before it'll load. So it'll take a second. Um. While we're on the subject of monthly reoccurring bills, I wanted to bring up something that I learned yesterday. I got an email from Adobe. I think this will be handy for some of our content creator listeners. I got an email from Adobe saying that the price of my Creative Cloud subscription was going up. So when I first started, I was paying, I was, when I first started, I was paying $39 a month for the Adobe Suite. That was like an introductory promo. After yeah. the first year, it went up to 80 uh -oh. bucks. The and then they just sent me an email saying that it was going up to 100 bucks. So not, what? Insig not insignificant. It's pretty expensive, the Adobe Suite. So I went to their... I oh, First, I did a little bit of research. And I heard that Adobe is very easy when it comes to giving discounts if you say that you're going to cancel your subscription. Yeah. And so what I found was people saying you had to talk to a customer service agent. You got to give them a little bit of a sob story about how it's too expensive, but you want to stay blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I go on their site. I talk to chatbot. I say, I want to cancel my subscription. They sent me to a page and it was all automated. I had to go through like three layers of saying, yes, I'm sure I want to cancel my Adobe subscription. And then at the very last point, right before you cancel, they say, okay, what about if we gave it to you for $39 a month again? <laughs> so I didn't even I didn't have to talk to a single person. I just went through a couple online questionnaires on their website and they reduced the price of my monthly subscription by 60%. For how Damn. long? Okay. For another year. Okay. Okay. They offered me a 60% discount for a year or two free months. Oh, I would take the 60% discount. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Good to know. Maybe I should do that because I have the the one that's like fifteen or twenty dollars a month for Photoshop and Lightroom. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because I guess you don't you don't use Premiere, right? So no, no, no. Did yeah, you find your also... Tube Buddy thing? Yeah. Okay. So it's under. Uh, so it's in the click magnet. Hold on. Give me a second here. And I, if I had to venture, anything meaningful from TubeBuddy is under their most expensive subscription. A hundred percent. Okay, so it's under, so you do click magnet and then you go under CTR opportunities. Okay. And it tells you which videos are performing well, even though they have a crap click-through rate and which ones would benefit the most from a revised thumbnail. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so it's so interesting. Tube... No, go ahead, Derek. I was gonna say I've never used two buddies. Is that just for YouTube content? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But the only yeah. thing that's relevant or actually helpful is in their most expensive thing that's like fifty bucks a month, <laughs> where you can do the A B testing. Every, basically every other yeah. feature in two buddies is irrelevant. Yeah. Yes. yes. In my opinion. That's true. No, that's... you're right. You're right. Hmm. It's interesting that the top video it recommends me in that one is the wine stand that I did. It says it's a very, very high opportunity. It's a 2.3% click through rate. However, yeah. the video I think has like over a million views. So at that point, I right. think it's like, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it's, it is recommending like he, my top one is a, uh, like an outdoor table I did, it says the CTR is 3%, and that has like 700,000 views. But right. you, you know how YouTube works, right? Like it keeps pumping out your content until right. the CTR gets low enough. So if you can do something to boost that CTR again, who knows? Maybe you get a whole new... Right. 
because I'm I've always been of the same opinion as you. You know, once a video gets to, you know, somewhere north of five hundred thousand views, I'm always very reluctant to play with the thumbnail. But maybe oh, we're not. missing an op. Oh, really? No. <laughs> but you're saying, well, you were saying that you don't want to play with that one. No, I guess what I'm saying is like, do they really think that that's the video where where my effort is best focused on? I mean, well, I, I mean, I'm gonna mess around with it. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's put a pin in this, and we'll circle back to it okay. next week or two weeks from now, and I'll play around with the uh, with it a little bit and see. I'll I'll take its advice. I'll redo like the top three and see if it makes a difference. Fair, fair. Well, speaking of videos and stuff like this, we wanted to talk about. Derek, you put out your let's call it your 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 relaunch, perhaps, of your YouTube channel. Yes, sir. I looked at the video; it looked like it had done pretty damn well, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. I haven't I got, watched uh, it yet. Well, I checked earlier; I've gotten about fifteen new subs and fifteen hundred um, views off of my hundred and forty subs that I had to start with. So I, I'd so say there that's you pretty go. good. So 10x your subscriber count. So was, was that... I mean, 10x, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No, yeah, you're, yeah, you're right. 100x. Or no. <laughs> no. No, 10x. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 10x. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> We're good at math. We're good at math, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> um, so did that exceed your expectations? Was that kind of your expectation going into it? Talk to Talk to me about that. No, I think that I think that exceeded my expectations. Uh, coming into it, okay. I figured, yeah, I got 140, 140 people uh, uh, subscribed. Of that, ten <clears> percent <throat> will probably watch it. Um, so I was expecting, you know, that plus like whatever it throws out there and gets picked up, I'd probably end up somewhere around a couple hundred uh, right. views yeah. altogether. But and it's only been, I mean, I put it out Saturday afternoon. I want to say like one or two o'clock my time Saturday. And mm -hmm. so it's been just a few days. It hadn't even been the first full week, and it's already doing pretty decent. So yeah. okay, I'm interested okay. to see where it'll keep going. I mean, it's, it's kind of like the last couple of days, it's the curve has gone flat. So this right. morning, or the right before we went live, I switched out the uh, the title and swapped the thumbnail with one that just has a different colored um, text on it. And okay. Then okay. I might I might play with that again next week with something completely different as far as like a thumbnail is concerned. I mean, Do that's the perfect time to change it. When you look at that graph of the viewers, that goes up, 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 starts to tail off. Yeah. And now it's just like a shelf. Now, no, basically what that's saying is no one knew is watching it. So that is the yeah. perfect time. Yeah. And that's what I figured it. like it's, it might be just sitting in somebody on somebody's, uh, you know, ready to watch page or whatever, mm -hmm. and they're just passing it up. But if I change it, maybe that next one will catch their attention. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Totally. Um, I had someone else I wanted to ask you about it. Oh well. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. So this is your channel relaunch. Did that um, perform significantly better than any of your old videos? Because I went back and it looked like you deleted sure. a bunch of your old ones. Uh, a couple of them, yeah. Um, but they, yeah, there was a couple that I deleted. They were from way before. And then anything that I've done in the last, since I changed it to the pecan tree design, I left up um, so far, but I plan to go back and anyways, I'll remove those as time goes on. But yeah, um, yeah they've definitely done better than I think with a couple exceptions on my personal channel. They've done better than anything else that I've had go up for sure. That's awesome. awesome. Man. I know the excitement of when you put out a video and you're like, oh, oh man, like, let's be real. The, the way that video is performed compared to your subscriber count, that is a video gone to the moon. Like, uh, yeah, that I video mean, if I got 10x my ass. subscriber count, I'd be pretty, yeah. pr pretty happy. Uh, well, hell yeah. yeah. Like, dude, that's <laughs> like, I know, like, you're like, oh, I got like 3,000 views. Dude, that's awesome. Like, yeah. it took me a long time to consistently get a video over a thousand views, like, a long time. Yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, my next uh, the the next video is probably not gonna. Well, actually, that's a good question. So, um, it'll be a couple weeks before I can get this island that I I'm building into a video and get it out. Yeah. Um, 
so between now and then because a, a few weeks probably like one, a month <laughs> let's be honest um but between now and then i'd probably like to i'd like to crank out another one and i was thinking that um one of my shorts that did really good was about a pull out spice rack that i did on the side of a um an oven bank sure um ooh, excuse me so i've had people ask for a build video on that. Now I can't go back in time and, and shoot a whole new build video, but I did shoot a lot of like static images of that. And I thought maybe I'll throw together like a five minute and talk about the process of building that using hmm. the static video and images hmm. that I have. And throw Interesting. That uh, I'm going to give, I, I would say if you're going to do that, you might want to shoot yourself talking okay. about the images rather than just having a static down. image on screen and like narrating over the top just give some like visual interest like yeah give, yeah or it make, make it like a talking head video where you're you know talking to the camera be like hey you know i'm i did this i yeah. did this i did that and use the still photos as like b-roll yes okay. yeah i like that i like that i think that is a much more approachable format because Think of it this way. If someone's going on YouTube, they're they're expecting a video. If I'm getting a slideshow, yes. I'm out. Yeah, but if exactly. like if it's like a talking head, like uh, our buddy Drew from Whitworks, he does a bunch of videos where he's, you know, talking to the camera. The majority of the video is just him talking to the camera, but then he has B-roll. Yeah. I would do try something like that. And it could be a format that your audience likes, could not. But also remember that your channel is small enough that you have the liberty to, to, to test out and, yeah. and 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 see what works, see what doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. why I figured I kind of got that that B roll that I shot of it, like uh, not just static images, but I got some video that I shot of it too. That's a little panty Even shots better. and stuff like that of the process as it's going. So yeah, I'll throw that up and that'll kind of tide me over till the next one comes out. I think. Yeah. Cool. And also don't feel like I know that's the, the common, um, you know, common YouTube guidance is, oh, my gosh, like, oh, my screen's going crazy. There we go. You have to put out a video like every other day. Like, oh, yeah. It, I don't think I truly don't really think it matters. No, I think no. it's quality over quantity. Agreed. Is, for sure. Is the key. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent. That's been the general consensus I've heard recently is quantity over quality for sure. Yeah. Right. I wonder if that quantity thing worked better when there were less creators on YouTube. Maybe. You know, if you could just be pumping out stuff into a relative vacuum and you could just be capturing new eyeballs because there just weren't that many pe other content creators out there in each niche. I don't know. <laughs> Sumat said, yeah, I put out one video a year. <laughs> That's going to be my cadence pretty soon. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of freeing to just be like, "Yeah, I'm gonna put out the video when I put out the video. Like, I'm gonna put it out when it's done." Right. Yeah. It's right. Not a moment before. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think there's creators are like that. And they they're successful, so <laughs> I don't have any. Fear yeah, I think there's definitely if you can create high quality stuff very frequently, I think that's good. But I think most people have a hard time balancing the two. Oh yeah. Because it's, I mean, it takes a lot to make a YouTube video. I was out to dinner with some, you know, some normal people who have normal jobs. And How boring. they were asking me, they're like, what goes into making a video? I was like, yeah, well, I'll film for three, four days, maybe five, six sometimes. Right. And then I go back and then I edit for five, six days. And then, you know, <laughs> and then, you know, I do thumbnails for a day and stuff like that. And they were like, oh, my God, I had no idea. I thought you just turned on the camera and like talked to it for a couple hours. And then then and like cut it in 2007. Up yeah yeah exactly so oh, yeah 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 i honestly m most of most people in my life never even go to that detail they're like oh like you like throw some videos together that's cool that's cool do you make yeah. any money doing that and you're like yeah yeah sometimes if i'm lucky <laughs> it does all right it does all right well, there's been, I wanted to kind of circle back on that, on the premiere thing that you're talking about. There's been some, sure. some discussion in the chat and we also got a patron question, um, all kind of related around the same thing. So typically we'd answer the patron questions in the after show, but I want to address it here. So 
Um, we'll just kick this one off. This is uh, oh, nice. oh yeah, uh, Milton Steve at Milton Woodworking says, "Hey guys, Steve from Milton Woodworking here in the UK. I'm passionate about the making process of furniture and any woodworking projects. To be fair, but." I'm at the start of my content creation journey. I have a few questions about the content creation process. So Let's I'm just going to hit the, the first one because it was kind of going along with what we were talking about. It says, do either of you use specific editing tools slash software for your videos or do you just use YouTube Studio? Ooh. Can you even do a whole video in YouTube Studio? That was going to be my question. Hold on. Let me I check I think this. you can. That's scary. I don't know that I would Could ever want to do good, that. Though? I can't imagine it's any good. Uh, Edit a full video in uh, YouTube. I can't even find the YouTube Studio in... Does upload a video. Oh, okay. Hold on. No, that's create oh, a post. Oh, Oh, you can sell multiple files. You can make a podcast, apparently. Um, Which I've I don't done know with all ours. Yeah, really, eh? <laughs> Is that what um, that podcast? Oh, we're getting off topic. We're getting off topic. Yeah, yeah, we don't... really are. I don't know if you can actually edit in YouTube Studio. And if you, can, you can, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh that's interesting yeah don't do it pay either okay if you if you want to go the free route use davinci resolve that's available on pc and mac okay for free so that's that's a very good option like there are professionals who use davinci resolve to edit movies Right. So it's a very high quality piece of software, despite the fact that it's free. Don't let the price tag fool you. And then the other two main options, I think, are uh, Final Cut and Premiere Pro. Right. So Final Cut, uh, Final Cut Pro is only available on Mac, yes. and it is yeah. a one-time purchase. I think it's five or six hundred bucks for the general public but if you mm -hmm. have a dot edu email address i think it's 200 so it's a one-time purchase and you get unlimited updates everything that's, that's personally what i use pretty yeah. damn good deal um the other one that is mac only is free is iMovie. 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 Yes. yeah i've never actually tried messing around i no i should I should say I tried messing around with iMovie in like the early 2000s. Right. Yeah. And that was the last time I <laughs> <Right>. ever touched it. <laughs> so iMovie is Final Cut Pro with 90 some percent of the features stripped out. Okay. Okay. If you're I mean, just looking to good. put clips in there, shorten them, do yeah. a voiceover, maybe a title or two. You're golden. Like iMovie okay. works great. I did the first, I don't know, 15 or so of my videos in iMovie. Yeah. And it's fine. You know, when it comes right down to it, you could make a million view video with just various clips and a voice. Yeah. Over. Absolutely. Really, really easily. Like the high end titles and transitions and color grading and all that stuff. In our it's space, all... not important. No. Yeah, like I even in most spaces. Right. Unless you're trying to like really sell yourself as like a filmmaker. Right. right? Unless you're like Peter McKinnon or something. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Even I think a lot of his videos Fuck. could still play relatively well with just cutting clips. You just Sorry, something? No, I just broke a pen. Oh no. Oh, luckily it wasn't the ink. Okay, we're good. Sorry, I didn't mean to distract. No, one hundred percent. Like one of the only the only niches I think like really dialing perfect color grading, all this kind of stuff, is if you're like like uh, in a photography like space, yeah, really trying space. to teach people this stuff, or like like you said, Derek, like a Peter McKinnon thing. Like, yeah, this isn't me like poo pooing anybody. But we all, uh, Jason from Bourbon Moth, 
et- films on an iPhone and edits on his iPad. He is not yeah. doing anything crazy. It's literally just cutting, trimming the beginning and end off clips, yeah. putting them together, recording yeah. a voiceover. That's and it. he doesn't even use any of those that we mentioned. I forget which one he used. He used something completely different. Uh, some app in, that he got. InShot in or something? Is yeah. it InShot? Yeah. He said he paid like $6 for the app. <laughs> and that's yeah. what he uses. So like, yeah. you know, you Steve, that's an option if you want to edit on your phone. Yeah. I can't think of anything worse. But you I know. Can't. I know. The, the idea of editing an entire video with my thumbs on the screen just oh, sounds, it's like, shoot me. And even you're just like, okay, Zach, don't use your thumbs. Use the Apple pencil or whatever. I hate no touch thing. controls. Like trying to get like one frame this way or yes. one frame that way. You always, it always moves when you're pulling yeah. your finger away from yeah. the screen. <laughs> I thought it's I was the only one. <laughs> but no, my fingers. No, all the time. <laughs> but let me hit you with this. Is this an example of your focusing on a minute detail that doesn't actually matter? Does anyone watching the video actually care if your clip was three frames longer or shorter? No, no. it jumps It jumps more like three or five seconds than it does three or five frames when you let <laughs> out. True. Yeah, it depends True. how close you're zoomed in. But you, you, you might be right. You might be right. I mean, I've always known that I overproduce my videos to a large degree. I could probably make my videos a lot simpler and it would still be fine. But I like the, you know, I like having a look. I like having a kind of a style to it. But it's I, I know it's not. It's to you. Exactly. Exactly. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, so I think the extent of the question is I'm looking to get into content creation. What video editing software do I buy? Answer: yeah. It doesn't matter. Well, we, yeah, just whichever pick one, one that you're comfortable works for with. you. Yeah, right. I, I yeah, started, I would say. Go ahead, Derek. I was, gonna, I was gonna say I started with um, what is it? Power Director, the one that that's it's. How I've seen that? a lot of people use it. It's it. They have an app on the App Store, and they have software for your computer. Oh, it's okay. like thirty bucks a year for their subscription okay. or you can do it for free and they put a little watermark on there and limit you yeah. know, your resolution sure. and everything. Sure. But that was fine for me for years. And then I got into premiere pro and right. You ever look back. I will say you, I don't know that this applies so much to the other ones. I was going to say, you kind of want to treat your video editing software, like buying into a power tool brand. Like Fair. you want to think about features you might need later. True, true. And things that you might want to do later. Because I would hate to invest a ton of time learning how to do Final Cut and then be like, oh, there's some feature in Premiere Pro that I absolutely need for my production. Right. And now I have to learn a completely new brand of software. Right. Right. It's yeah, it's challenging. I mean, honestly, if I were to restart now, knowing what I know now, it's tough. So yeah. Final Cut runs so smoothly and quickly on a Mac because it's optimized specifically yeah. for a Mac. Yeah. Premiere Pro on a Mac is known to not run super great. Like, don't get me wrong. It's going to work fine. But like... It's going to be slower. It's like you're going to run into issues. However, because Final Cut is a one-time purchase, sure, they they throw you some updates here and there and stability Mm -hmm. things. But like the thing that people commonly see on short form content where the the captions automatically pop up as people say that, that's not in Final Cut. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, Adobe... As much as I have issues with Adobe around them being expensive, being slow, being kind of glitchy, they are right on the cutting edge of integrating new features. Right. I've been getting updates like once a month where they're like, hey, try this new AI generative fill thing where it'll just make a background for your video. Right. And yeah, like the automatically generated captions and then right. turning those automatically generated captions into automatically generated graphics on screen. It's right. kind of kind of crazy what you can do with it and again the other nice thing about adobe is that it's not just premiere pro it's also photoshop 
and right. it's also Adobe Audition and After Effects, and they all integrate pretty well with each other. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's something to think to, about too. There's a little bit of an ecosystem there. Right, right. But all of the video editing softwares in a in a you know large blanket statement all do the same thing. You import clips, you put them on a little timeline, you chop off the beginning and end, beginning and end, you rearrange them, you press play, and it just kind of swipes across like a conveyor belt, and it plays mm -hmm. them. They all work like that. But if I were to open up Premiere right now and just try to like bang out a video, it's it'd take me a little time. Same thing if you yep. did Final Cut. Like, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. I would. We're, we're all my shortcuts wouldn't work. Sure, I have my shortcuts. <laughs> right, things like that. But yeah, so in summary, it doesn't matter what editing software you get. I would stick with something that has some sort of reputation. So I wouldn't sink all of your time into learning, you know, Billy Bob's editing software that is an app that just came out six months ago. Like if you want to do it on yeah. the phone, use InShot or what's the other? Um, Go to the app store, look at the top 10. Yeah. Yeah, true. Um. If you have a Mac, iMovie, free. Just get that because it's basically Final Cut, but super stripped down. You could yeah. also get an Adobe trial. What do they give you? Like seven days, 30 days, something like that? Probably 30 days, seven, I imagine. I think it's two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks? There you go. But screw around with that and yeah. know that it is a learning experience. I highly recommend go search YouTube for like, you know, beginner's course, how to use Adobe yeah. Premiere. Watch. Yeah watch and do the entire one and a half to two and a half hour thing. And you'll be damn near proficient at that software after that. Here's maybe a uh, look up some tutorial videos for different video editing softwares and then find a creator that you like and who has like yeah. a good library of content. Cause I think half the reason I got into premiere pro was because I was watching other creators who were using premiere pro and they had all these video tutorials. Right. So I'd see something in their video about, and I'd be like, Oh, okay. I can do that. Like just, you know, follow along basically watching right. them. Right. So, right. Right. And I'd say, don't feel like you're locked into the first one you choose. In fact, yeah. maybe in the beginning, don't go for the premiere pro or the Adobe suites. Uh, or the after, after uh, um, whatever it's called, the Mac one. I forget. Uh, uh, but yeah, don't go for one of yeah, the, sure. the high end ones right off the bat. Just you know, go for the maybe try yeah. one of the cheap ones first and see if you even like video editing. Right. And then you know, it's like tools. You know, you don't start out with the Fest tools. You start out with what you get at the big box stores. Right. And yeah. then you get comfortable with those, and you can go up to the bigger stuff. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Uh, SR Woodworking wanted to know what did we got what do we use for background music when starting out? Well, I know now we Crickets. use Epidemic Sound, which is yep. a monthly subscription. Um, yep. I don't know, it's like ten bucks a month, something like that. Yeah, it's surprisingly cheap, which I like. I think yeah, it's probably ten American because I think it works out to about fifteen Canadian, thirteen, yeah, fifteen something Canadian. Like that. But so the good thing about Epidemic Sound is they they will actually like go to bat for you. So if you ever get a copyright claim, they for music they will actually take care of it. Yeah, which is nice. And they also have like an ever extending library. Um, but I get it nine dollars, ten dollars a month, whatever it is, is a lot when you're first starting out. So what I used for background music was the stuff in the YouTube Studio. You can download sure. it, use it for free. It's very limiting and very difficult to find what you're looking for. Yeah. But it is free. And you've all one heard the these nice, songs a thousand times before. One of the nice things about Epidemic Sound is that you're able to not just sort by genre of music, but you can also search by emotion. So right. you can say like, I want to have a happy laid back song that's building. <laughs> it's building and, and is hip hop. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's 120 beat. PM if you want. You can get really right. granular with how you search, which right. is handy in a lot of situations. Yeah. Uh, they also and spend I, a lot curating like playlists. Yeah. I heard they have better uh they handle their copyright stuff a lot better too, like Eric right. was saying about them going to bat for you. But not only that, but they hold on to their libraries longer. Like a lot of 
other ones will tend to drop older music oh, and whenever yes. they do you get a copyright infringement yes Ooh. yes yes that's super important uh, i know people that have used like um you know those iphone apps or whatever they're like mm-hmm. oh yeah, like it maybe yeah. an in shot they're like this music's yeah. free for you to use and then six months later they get a copyright claim on their youtube video and then right like you're screwed yeah yeah just can't redo that right if you get to the point where you're making money and music and your videos is important to you, pay for Epidemic Sound. It has a track record of being, you know, legality of working out really well for people. There's a reason that you've heard that name before. Yeah. And that's like what all yeah. creators uh, use. I think the best thing that I can say about Epidemic Sound is I've used them my entire way through my content creation journey. I've never once thought about switching to another provider. No. It's just seamless. It's easy. It works. It's all been good. Uh, And to throw in one layer of confusion, I also am a member of a website called Motion Ray, which is a combination of stock footage, motion graphics, music, sound effects, stock photos, a few other things. And it's pretty decently priced. I'm just going to pull up the pricing plan right now. Um, uh, of course. So for anybody who doesn't know what graphics means, that's basically like, say, Zach's titles talking about and- a, yeah, like titles. If Zach's talking about something and he's like, oh, 20% of my cost was this, 30% of my cost was this, it might be a little like pie chart that like pops up and yeah. all he has to do is put like 20% building costs, 30% would i don't i'm making this up and it like does this crazy cool graphics thing like and all he does is just drag it on top of this video in his video editing software and it's done exactly uh and it's so it's 19.99 a month i used to pay 50 dollars a month for a stock footage website that had like some graphics uh and i ended up canceling that and getting this because it was just a much better value because you got music okay. you got graphics you got stock so yeah. just made a lot more sense Probably not it- necessary to people get right when they start out, but if they get more yep. into video editing, I have full transparency. I don't use one of those. I just, when I, I bought like a graphics package, I think I was paid like 50 bucks for it. And it had like a million different like titles and stuff on it. And I was like, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, watch. You ready for this segue? So if you guys enjoy how in depth we go in answering some of these questions, then you would love to check out the after show. Cause that's what the after show is. We talk about woodworking questions. You know, we had a question about, you know, how do I convince my friends and, and spouse to support me during all of this, these endeavors, all this kind of stuff. See, this is a good segue. If you like that stuff and want to ask your questions so we can really go in depth and answer them, then you gotta become a new patron. That's Just right. like Dan Armen Dan Armendarez did. <laughs> Hell yeah, Dan. Man. Sorry, Dan, I'm so sorry. I know I'm destroying your last name. <laughs> In the addition to our returning top tier patrons, Christopher Johnson, Josh at Freedom Workshop, Brooke Appler at Grizzly Bear Woodworks, Dadu, Luke Schmidt, Corey Duvall, Jason. Price at Priceless Pro Designs, Scott Eastman at EC's Woodshop, and of course the Power Cocker, formerly known as Wes. Those are just some of the folks who are supporting us uh, in the fight against the Green Suitors podcast, available on Apple and Spotify. Um, you know, help help support the show, and they get have access to the after show. You know, access to the Discord server, all kinds of stuff. But Zach, we've got exciting news for the folks, don't we? We sure do. We are going to completely rework our Patreon tiers and the rewards therein. Mm -hmm. So we're a little worried that we're going to screw some people who are potentially waiting on some merch. So what we're going to do is there are still some people who haven't received their merch because they haven't inputted their addresses into Patreon. So if that sounds like it might be you, if you're still waiting on some merch you haven't received, go to Patreon, input that stuff now, because the new tiers are going to wipe out that stuff. And I don't want anybody to get screwed over and not receive the merch that they've paid for. Uh, So next week, 
We're going to give it uh, one week from when this podcast comes out. And then we're going to roll out the new tiers. Yes. And I just wrote myself a note that I'm going to look at everyone who hasn't received merch because they don't have an address. And I will send you a message on Patreon. Oh, okay. So that's get, personal. Get that settled. And personal email. Yeah. Like, like what Zach said, if for whatever reason, you know, somebody was like, oh, I just joined. And that, you know, that sticker was what I was after. Let us know. We will yeah. take care of it. The intent is yeah. not to screw people over. We're changing Patreon perks just to freshen things up. We've been 86 yeah. episodes in. We want to change it up. If you at all feel like you're getting screwed over by something, please tell yeah. us. We yeah. resp- Send us a message on Patreon and let's talk about it. We will make it right. We'll get you something cool sent out. We got access to some cool stuff. We'll make it, we'll make it right for you. Uh, Delaware Workshop. If you're not on the app. That works too. So uh, we're not eliminating any. Well, we are. Are we eliminating tiers? The tiers are re- just the high ones. Yeah, the high ones. The, do we just want to go through what we got. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Uh, Derek, can you pull those up? Do you mind? Yeah, you want it up on the. Yeah, pull it up on the screen, and we'll we'll talk about it. So there we go. Level one is what we're going to call the. Th- the uh, the green suitors fan. It's three dollars. <laughs> so what you get with that is you get access to the after show, and then you get your 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 name called out on the show. So mm-hmm. the idea there is, you know, if you want to listen to the after show, low barrier of entry. Um, yeah. We are going to, you know, have that limited. So we're going to limit it to somewhere around a hundred people. So as the podcast grows, um, you know, the people who adopted it early can you know save a couple bucks it's kind of an incentive or and and also a thank you to our earliest fans and supporters right right um level two yeah yeah, you get locked in at three dollars basically it's like you know join now we're special low pricing right um level two is five dollars a month it's the bent you get everything we talked about before you get access to the discord uh, so that's like a private, you know, chat service that we have that I still need to figure out how to use. But um, there's tons of really cool, you know, discussion in there that's not even yeah. necessarily just us. It could just be other fans of the of the show that talk. And you get uh, priority questions answered on the after show. The uh-huh. other thing we have that we're working on is we are getting rid of the merch. However, yeah. we're looking to find a different provider that's cheaper. And we want to try to basically like give like a discount on that, but we're still working on that, as Derek's notes say, pending so, that. <laughs> yeah. So what we're concerned with is basically we want to do a discount code for a merch store. And the higher your tier in right. Patreon, the more of a discount you get on the merch store, right. but we don't want to end up in a situation where we're promising somebody a 20% discount, but we're, that's like basically um, what do I want to say Come here? That's negative. It basically costs us money. We're upside down. Yeah, right? exactly. Because there's only so much margin on each item. You know, for people who've never really done it before, when you sign up for one of these drop shipping websites that ships out t-shirts on your behalf, there's not much margin for you there as a creator. <laughs> Something that costs the end user 20 bucks, you might be lucky to see like a dollar two dollars as the creator. Right. right. Um, right. so we we're kind of limited in the amount of a discount that we can give, but we want to get our store set up and then give the patrons as much of a discount as we can. So that's right. why it's pending math. Essentially. Right. Cause we put out a, a survey on Patreon and it seemed like people were interested in, in the merch, but they were like, yeah, just make it separate or whatever. And yeah. because the Patreon merch fulfillment, like let's be honest, it was a pain in the ass. We went through that, the whole debacle, yes. what, like six months ago, people weren't getting their merchandise. It's, it costs you more as a creator just to have the merch as an option. So I think running it as a separate store and it'll also allow us to, you know, if we're doing it through a drop shipping company, we can have unlimited designs, unlimited designs. We can have more variation in what's offered. We don't have to be restricted to just a couple things. Right. 
So I overall, like uh, people are like, oh, you got rid of the merch. Yes, we got rid of the merch in Patreon. But I yeah. think it's like you said, Zach, it's going to be more valuable to people. We're going to improve yeah. the merch. Right, right. Yes, yeah. Level three is $10 a month. It's the Fulton. So you get everything that we talked about before. And might I say my personal favorite perk here is troll time. So what you're going to do is you get to submit your own Green Suiters podcast slam. You can say whatever you want about the Green Suiters podcast, and we are going to read it live during the episode and give you credit for it. Mm -hmm. That'll be fun. Unless it will get us taken off YouTube, in which case we'll probably do it in the after show. Right, right. <laughs> um, again, probably a merch store discount, but we're still math. Um, level four is $25 a month, and that's the sedge. So you get everything that we talked about before, plus you get uh, your name read on every single episode. However, here's what I think is going to be fun, and I'm excited for this. Um, we're going to call it BYOC, bring your own camera. So it's going to be like a monthly hour long, or, I mean, even if we leave, the chat can still keep sure. going, right? Yeah. I didn't think about that hour plus long, basically like a teams, Skype, uh, hangout. Google video hangout. It's yeah. I think, I think if we do it as a hangout, we can also broadcast it to youtube if we wanted to yeah okay. and i think correct me if i'm wrong but we were going to do that as a replacement for the after show one right. after show every month correct yeah. right 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 yeah. so yeah it'll be i don't know we'll make this up the first after show of the month will be the like a group hangout so we can talk yeah. about anything you can you know show us you can ask questions you know viewer to viewer can can talk like we want this yeah. to be a collaborative thing like not segment ourselves away from other people like we want to you know get in the trenches you know chat with you guys meet you guys and stuff like that like that's fun as hell yeah so we're doing that and um yeah and then we're also going to have another level that doesn't have any additional perks but if you know if you want to support a little bit more you're welcome to yeah just uh you want to be a nice, nice person to us yeah. to support our yeah. podcasting yeah. addiction. <laughs> right. So the, the whole, basically the whole point of that is we're re-engineering the perks with the idea that we want to provide you more value without really taking anything away. Um, yeah. We, our thoughts are, we don't think we're screwing anybody over, but if you feel like you are, let us know. We'll make it right. Yeah. Like yeah. if if you you really really wanted that sticker and it's and it's not going to come to you, we have stickers, we have things, we'll make it right for you. I promise. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of off the cut stickers, so I'll just <laughs> put a bunch in the an envelope right. and send it to you. Right. We'll we'll make it we'll make it work. But uh, that's enough on Patreon. Um, mm -hmm. We got anything else we want to talk about, or we want to head over to the after show because we got we got some good questions. Well, we got yeah, good I, questions. I gotta... I gotta say, you were talking about the the Discord and and how you know what we talk about on there. I'd yeah, about Eric has only people need some. Yeah, Eric hasn't been there. Yeah, Eric has no concept of what goes on on the Discord. Okay. So anything he says should be disregarded it's like entirely. Maybe ten percent of it is about the show. The other ninety percent is people on there discussing their projects and talking yeah. about their passions and what's going on within the community. It's on my note. Discord, Discord. is circled. <laughs> I am going to download it. This is, is it going to be my new bathroom app? But potentially, yeah. I mean, there's memes on there. People, yeah, people sharing their projects. There's a lot of uh, it comes like in ways. Eric shared his YouTube video on there when it first came out, and everybody was talking about it and giving him feedback on it. So very supportive. Yeah. Right and on. And everybody shares their videos when they post them. A lot of people yeah. do. So you get Heck some support yeah. from that too. I'm down with it, and because it's you know it's a group of folks that are that are that are patrons. You know, it's not going to just be trolls in there, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. It's a very curated group of high quality people. Yeah. Unlike the people at the Green Sewers podcast, the Green available Sears on Apple and Spotify. Uh, well, speaking of 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 patrons, we should probably 
wrap up the main show and head over to the after cool. show so we can talk to these patrons about some questions yeah. we got. Holy moly, this is a long one. Well, we got anything else we need to say? Uh, no, thanks for listening, everybody. Keep an eye out for those new Patreon tiers. If you're a current patron, make sure you got your address in there so you get your merch. And we will see you in the next episode. See ya.